Hi, this is Joanna Brandy, and welcome to Living on the Growing Edge. It's a crazy, changing, evolving, and expanding world. So staying ahead today means more than just keeping up. It means exploring the frontiers of thought, innovation, ideation. In this long form video series, I bring you face to face with visionaries, disruptors, thinkers who are shaping tomorrow's workplaces and worlds by living out on the growing edge. They're reframing, reimagining, and re-envisioning. And as I learned from my first guest, reinventing. So I'm happy you're here. Enjoy the series. You can always leave comments below and be sure to subscribe while you're here. Hello and welcome to The Growing Edge. This is Joanna Brandy, and today we are here with Karen Pfeffer. Karen is a friend, a strategic partner, and someone who's going to make you laugh, who's going to open your eyes as she tells us all about the many growing edges she's lived on. So, Karen, <laughs> thanks for joining us. My Let pleasure. Me speak a little bit of your bio, and then I'm hoping you'll jump in and fill in all the, the parts yeah. I missed. How's that? Absolutely. Karen's an adjunct professor of communication at Florida Atlantic University. She is, uh, she's had a career in, she's had several careers. She's had several careers. She's had a career in banking. She's had a career in marketing. She's had a career in advertising. And now she is co-founder of Firepower Seminars. And wait till she tells us about that. But Karen, this is one of the, I think the most interesting things is at age 15, Karen came to the United States from Venezuela with a father who was from Kansas and a mother who was from Puerto Rico. <laughs> and Karen makes me laugh every time she talks about it because she said growing up was like growing up in the Lucy show, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> now, so she is, she is, uh, she's used her multicultural background to help herself push the envelope wherever she can, <laughs> which is one of the reasons I love her. Um, Karen entered the very male-dominated field back at that time of banking, where she became uh, the first woman president of the Florida Women's Banking Association. Uh, she she uh, broke it was actually the Florida Bank Marketing Association. Okay, good. Thank you. I thought yeah. I don't. You know, which I, I is no longer around. So. <laughs> Okay, the Florida Bank Marketing Association, that's just fine. Um, but then she left there to start a full-service uh, marketing agency called What a Concept. And I'm going to have her tell you why it was called What a Concept. <laughs> then she went on from there to, to have a much smaller, what would you call a marketing consultancy? Mm -hmm. And from there to become co-founder of Firepower Seminars. So, Karen, I'm going to let you tell a little bit about the story because this is not about me introducing you as much as this is giving you the opportunity to talk about all the times you've been living on the growing edge. Absolutely. Thank you, Joanna, for that. I really appreciate that. And I love working with you. So it's a delight to be with you here today. So let me just start where you started, and that's with my background and growing up in South America with a dad from Kansas and mom from Puerto Rico. Uh, you know, speaking Spanish uh, during the daytime and English at nighttime. And as I came to the United States, I literally went into culture shock because I came here when I was 15 years old. And uh, all of a sudden I realized, oh, wait, not everybody greets everybody by hugging and kissing. And uh, there's certain words that you're not supposed to say. And I learned all this from my parents because my dad, you know, spoke really poorly in Spanish and my mother spoke very poorly in English. So it was like the Lucy show, but reverse. So yeah, so many, many, many did, did they express themselves with their hands like Italians do? Oh, Latins always do this. It's part of the Latin community. So <laughs> not so much from Kansas. My dad never used his hands that much, but my mom did. And I'll just tell you one quick story before I get into my background. And that is when uh, family visited from Puerto Rico, my dad opened up the door and said in Spanish, which I'll translate, hola, como esta la viajera? Um, viajera, which is hi, how is the old bag instead of viajera, which is how is the traveler? So little things like that really got me interested in communications. Like how can two people being so different get along so well and still everybody understands what they do we mean to say? So <laughs> when do you teach communication? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, communication has always been of interest to me for sure. So yeah. when I came to the United States, I started my career in banking, as you mentioned. 
And I went through many mergers, as we all know, what banking has done. And uh, I got tired of it. And I remember being in the car. I love uh, doing trainings. And I was listening to a, a, a training at the time. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if I don't stay in banking, what else could I do? And I said, wait a minute, I could start my own business. What a concept. And so that's why I called my first company, What a Concept. And uh, I started out out of my garage in South Miami. And I converted it into my office because at the time I really didn't have uh, many funds. And my family and all my loved ones said, Karen, you're crazy. You don't know anything about business. All you know is banking and bank marketing, which is very different. Right. And I thought, you know what? I, I'm, I'm kind of a polarity responder. When people say I can't do something, I'm like, oh, yeah, watch me. So I said, you know what? I'm going to practice what I have learned. And that's what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is, okay, I had a boat, I had a house, I had a car, and I thought, okay, so they take the house, they take the car, the boat's paid for. So I head down to Mallory Square down in the Keys and take my guitar because I love music and I've been playing guitar since a little child, and um, I'll have some food to eat. What's the worst that can happen? So I went for it. And That's um, fabulous. Much, That's to my fabulous. Surprise, much to my surprise. I really excelled because I really was driven. I had posted all around the, the room in those uh, post-it easel uh, pads, what can I do today to generate income? Because I realized that we direct our thoughts, that oftentimes that thoughts can direct us, but we're in charge of our emotions. And that's one of the things that you teach. And I love that about you. So I did that. And within a year, I was able to move out and actually get an office in South Miami but, you know, in San Ignacio Avenue in South Miami and Red Road, off of Red Road, and uh, built it up to 25 employees, did really well. And uh, unfortunately, after 9-11, things started to go down a little south because of anthrax and my specialty was direct mail. And it really made me ponder and say, you know what, I think I'm going to take a little sabbatical here and reassess because uh, as many professional women, and I'm sure you can relate to this, uh -huh. I was a workaholic. Uh, very, no. early, yeah, very early in the morning, first in the office, and very late at night, last in the office, because I really felt a responsibility to my team and, and committing to payroll and all everything that goes with it. And I realized I was not very healthy. And I remember being on the treadmill during that period, and the doctor, the cardiologist is like, Karen, you're going to have to do something. And I'm like, well, what do you suggest I do? Because I have all these responsibilities. But I realized, you know what? I had a very limiting belief, and this ties into what I do here today. Growing up in South America and with the Latin culture, and any Latinas that are listening or Latinos, you all recognize this, we are brought up as women to believe that we have to take care of everybody else first before we take care of ourselves. And that often translates into other cultures, such as the Jewish oh, culture. It translates into the Italian culture. Italian too. culture, you name yeah. it. Yeah. And so I realized, you know what, that's a belief that was gifted to me that is not necessarily true. And once I became aware of that, I shifted that to, I take care of myself first so I can take care of others at outrageous levels. And it shifted everything. Instead of being- at Did you say at, at outrageous levels? I yes, outrageous oh, level. Very cool. Well, well, instead of being at work at six o'clock in the morning, I don't take calls until nine o'clock. And now I've said- you know, professional boundaries. And of course, there's exceptions to the rules because we work globally and oftentimes we have to work with different time exchanges and whatnot. But it's like now I take the time to meditate, which I never used to do. I take the time for my breathing exercises, for my yoga, all those things that are really important to me now, which weren't even in my sphere of influence before. I had no idea what they were. So it, it's been it's been quite a journey. And um, I have to tell you, when I had my, my advertising agency, as I mentioned, I had several employees. One of the things that I did, because I do believe in empowering team members, is I made sure that all my team members did something totally out of their comfort zone, such as zip lining, or fire walking. And so one of these, I, it's just part of my nature, is like in order to grow, you have to do things and expand. In order to grow, you have to go walk on fire. Do it this weekend. <laughs> Not necessarily. Not necessarily walk on fire. Not like that. Okay, not like that. <laughs> but it, it's really what, what we call going into the stretch zone. You know, we're, we're all in the comfort zone, which is here. But if we go a little higher, it's just let's go into the growth zone, not the panic zone. Because oftentimes as individuals, we go from, uh, you know, the comfort zone to the panic zone. So we go I, right. Back. 
And that was my experience in the corporate world. I got outside my comfort zone, but hardly ever before having to pass through that panic zone to, to expand. So thank goodness for that. Absolutely. So that's one of the reasons why I implemented that as part of my philosophy of, and, and really people that know me, clients as well as friends and associates, they know that I do things outside of my comfort zone because it stretches me. And yeah. it's often reading books that I normally wouldn't read or doing experiences that I normally wouldn't read, like ropes courses, things along those lines. So to make a long story short, one of my team members, which was my production director, which is Connie Phelan, who is now the founder and president of Firepower Seminar. She was my print production uh, and the director of everything that we did at What a Concept. And the Firewalk experience was so transformative for her that when I decided to downsize, um, she came to me and said, you know what, I've always had this, uh, this dream of starting my own firewalking company. And I looked at her and I was like, are you crazy? Oh, is that <laughs> that dream? It's, it's one thing to walk on hot coals and yeah, yeah, I'm empowered and yeah, but it's another thing to teach it and to do it on an ongoing basis. And I said to her, she's an introvert. Yeah, she's a very big introvert. Oh, yeah, God. we're total opposites. Yeah. And so um, she said, you know what? It was so transformative. I want to give other people that opportunity. And I thought to myself, well, who am I to deny her to do that? So I told her, I said, you know what? Find the person who trained the one who brought fire walking to the forefront, Tony Robbins. Find the one who taught him, which is Tali Burkan. And she did. She located him in California. He no longer teaches. He's now retired. But we were the last people that he actually trained. And oh, I wow. went with Connie to support her. I had no intention of becoming a certified firewalk instructor. Once I met Holly, I was like, wow, this man really operates from the heart. And he is a philanthropist. And he started with, I mean, it's just amazing his story. And as soon as I started learning about him and how he operates and how we, yeah. we've heard it before, but the, the longest journey is from the head to the heart or from the mind to the heart. He really operates from the heart. I thought, I want to learn from this, man. I want to get certified, too. So I plucked down my credit card, and, and we both got certified. So in 2006, Connie launched Firepower Seminars, and I joined her as co-founder. And uh, because of my banking background, and I love doing numbers and accounting, believe it or not, in addition to my music, uh, I just love, you know. Well, talented, for sure. <laughs> I love balancing to the penny. It's just always been a thing for me. And so uh, within the first year, I was like, you know, we might want to consider starting adding additional things um, in addition to firewalking because not a lot of companies, especially corporations, are really ready to let's bring that fire on, you know? Uh, that's a hard sale, honey, a yeah. real hard sale. <laughs> well, to me, we don't really sell things. We share from the heart. But even that was very even challenging. That. Yeah. So we started incorporating team building into the company. And um, it started growing and, you know, now we do anything from really our, our most most valuable, I think, and most um, requested activity that we do is board breaking. Mm -hmm. uh, not, and we still do corporate firewalking. We do it a lot for especially chapters of organizations, which is, you know, on a global basis. And to me, it's about people becoming aware of beliefs, just like I had the belief that, you know, I had to take care of everybody else first before I took care of myself. Once that shifted, I lost weight. I took better care of myself. I was able to be healthier. And I realized that's a huge impact. And, you know, right in the middle of the word belief is the word lie. Yeah. Yes. So not that. all beliefs are true. They were, they were given to us by those before us, our teachers, our parents, or sure. anybody that got involved in our environment and in our upbringing and, and whatnot. So well, yeah, most people tell their kids not to go near fire because they're going to be burnt. And that that's, that's instilled in a very early age. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when Connie, who's our main facilitator for firewalking, she brings that up. She says, yeah, you're going to do something completely opposite to what you've been taught most of your life. And that's exactly you know, don't get near fire. Don't, you know, and it's like, so we use fire as a transformation. And let me diverse a little bit and just share a little bit about the fire walk that we do, because it's very, very different to us. It's very ceremonial in that it is challenged by choice. You're not pushed to do and to walk and to, you know, get into this amazing ah, raw thing. It's like, and go, it's like, no, this is about you connecting with what's important to you. If you're releasing things, 
If you're asking for assistance from those, uh, for those that believe in a higher power and from your ancestors and so on, and oftentimes we'll have a fire lighting ceremony where the individuals get to participate in placing a log with whatever they're putting into that log onto the fire. And when we light it, everybody participates and we say, you know, the things that we need to say in connection as we do individually. And traditionally, the smoke that goes up um, is really those prayers or thoughts or intentions or releases going up into our ancestors and to shift things because we can. I, I will say, having experienced it, that mm -hmm. it's a very sacred. Uh, it's a very sacred. The way you, do, I've, I've never experienced it with Tony Robbins people or anything like that. I've only experienced it at Firepowers. But the way you do it, it is. It, it ends up being very sacred. First mm -hmm. of all you prepare people by doing a lot of other challenges before they actually walk on fire. Right. Um, but I, I can remember as you were telling that story, I can remember putting a lot, putting the log in with intention, yep. you know, what I was letting go of. And I can remember standing there in front of the fire. And it's not like you see, you know, when you watch this on the internet or something, everybody's clapping and cheering. It's dead silent. You know, it's quiet. And I remember standing there going, can I do this? Can I do this? I had to remember my intention. And everybody is so was patient, patient. Mm -hmm. Nobody. And then eventually you hear people go, oh, come on. <laughs> you, know, you can do this. You can do this. But it was it's a very, very sacred experience. Yeah. Yeah. And it is absolutely life changing because if, as a matter of fact, I still have one of those orange cards probably sitting up behind me somewhere that says I've walked on fire and if I can walk on fire, I can do anything. Right. And that's why we do it. And believe me, I, I think what Tony Robbins does is amazing. He actually got me started on my trajectory way back yeah. and got me interested in neurolinguistic programming, which I'll share in a minute. It's just a different style. That's all. Because yeah. it's all about allowing individuals to realize that they can tap into their full potential. And he Absolutely. does it with thousands of people. So yeah. it, it's a big difference. So I, I don't want to ever, you know, say that things oh, are no, no, no. No, I, I, I different. It's very different. All for, all for the cause of assisting those that go through the process. So Absolutely. and to me, when I teach and people see images of me walking on these 20, 1200 degree hot coals. I say to them, it's not because we need more firewalkers on the planet, but it's because we need people to be able to shift their mindset. Because if you can walk on 1200 degree hot coals and not burn, what else can you do in life that you think is not possible? That's right. why we do it. That's right. why we do it. So um, while I was at uh, What a Concept and I was uh, running that business, I am a trainee. I love training. So I'm always constantly doing trainings. I've been to Zig Ziglar, bless him. He was an amazing teacher. Uh, Brian Tracy, um, Tony Robbins, you name them. I've been to all of them. And I remember going to one of Tony's um, events and it was called The Competitive Advantage. And as he's teaching, I'm watching the audience and I'm realizing, wow, he's really captivated this audience. So I picked up his first book and in it, I read about neuro-linguistic programming, that this is what turned his life around. I thought, well, if he did it and he teaches modeling, you know, find somebody who's done it and you can do it too. I said, why can't I do it? So I immediately looked up online and found that the University of Miami School of Medicine was providing an NLP certification. Now they don't certify anymore because the, the instructor who was there, wonderful Dr. Kneffel, she's since retired. Uh, but so they no longer offer. But when I went, I was the only business person. And I remember showing up to this course and thinking, I'm going to learn this stuff so I can become a greater communicator, more effective and increase my sales, build my business. And I'm in there with my business suit and all and we're all in a circle. <laughs> and uh, the instructor's like, OK, so everybody share. Why are you here? So the doc, they were all medical doctors and, you know, psychologists and therapists and whatnot, because NLP was originally designed for the therapy and for mm -hmm. medical profession. And uh, everybody's going around, well, because of the gestalt theory and this and that, and it comes to me and I'm like, well, <clears throat> I'm going to enhance my communication and build my business. <laughs> and they're all looking at me like, what? <laughs> but you know what, Joanna? I applied everything that was taught and guess what? It worked. It worked. I yeah. increased sales. I was able to not only enhance my communication, but then teach what I learned, which is what I do now. For example, most individuals, and we don't learn this when we go to, to college or in our master's or whatnot. Uh, they don't teach you that everybody has different learning styles and different communication oh. styles. 
And, you know, I'm extremely visual. So I will say things like, I see what you're saying. Does it look good? Is it a clear picture? Where a kinesthetic person is more of a feeling person, which you're very kinesthetic as well. Ooh, as me. Yes. <laughs> and so a kinesthetic yeah. person has to make sure they feel good about it. So they'll say things like, can't wrap my arms around this. Walk me through it one more time. The auditory person will say things like, hmm, doesn't sound right to me. Let's discuss it a little bit more. And of course, you have the olfactory and gustatory, which is the smell and, and the taste, which tends to be more in the food and, and beverage business. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes I, I hear you say these words. I think it's because we've become so accustomed of being flexible. But I've had a like a, a an amazing chef from California call me and said, Karen, your proposal is so delicious. And I was like, oh, OK. Well, I... <laughs> You know, I have a, a couple of, of things I just want to comment. My sister's a chef. My sister's a holistic chef. Uh -huh. Oh, let's talk food. And she's she's right on. Talk about cutting edge. I'm going to get her on the show soon. Uh, she's right out there. She's an integrative health coach, chef, what have you. Yeah. She can't have a conversation without talking about food. She yeah. cannot come to your home or anywhere without bringing food. Long yeah. before she started her own business, when she was in the when she was in the sales profession and she sold advertising space, she never walked out the door without muffins yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. here was a woman that was coming to sell you, and she brings you these gorgeous, healthy muffins. She's a very successful salesperson. But I just want I, I just want to bring up some of the parallels here because there's sure. so much fun. Karen and I share the same birth date. That's right. she always says, not the same year, but the same birth date. We were both born on the same day in July. Uh, and I also had that same situation. When I start, when I moved, when I, um, I used to work in the corporation I worked in, I, I worked 15 minutes from home and I would get home and I'd be, you know, cause I wasn't ever enough time. Eventually I bought my first house and moved 45 minutes away. That's a problem. I would fall asleep on the way home. So I discovered audio tapes. Yeah. So I discovered Tony's work, Unlimited Potential or something like that. And I played him in the car going to and from work so that I didn't doze off at the wheel. <laughs> and eventually I wanted to become an NLP trainer. And they didn't train anywhere where I was. So I had to go down to Philadelphia once a month wow. for three days to get trained in Philadelphia just so I could learn NLP. So we have some sort of incredible wow. parallels. Yeah. I, I We had a different kind of communication challenge in the world I grew up in. My uh -huh. parents were both Italian, so of course the hands were involved, but they were both lawyers. Uh -huh. And lawyers sort things very differently than the rest of the population. So I think uh -huh. we've had so many parallels in our lives, which I think makes it so much easier easier for us when we work together and train together because Absolutely. I think we read each other's minds at a certain point or something like that. <laughs> I think so. A lot of parallels. Yeah. The, the point being that we can do more than what we think is possible. Yes. And, and I realized that when I was running What a Concept and when Connie started and launched uh, Firepower Seminars in 2006, which are now going 17 plus years, which is amazing. It's really about allowing people to tap into their full potential and, and we do that by teaching the communication. And I don't, I don't certify people in NLP, but I do bring in some of that because it's important for people to know what their styles is, how can they elicit strategies to determine how to give presentations and things along those lines. But more importantly, how to use your mind to shift how you're thinking. And thinking is so, so, so empowering and positive. You know, we talk about the brain elasticity, and I know you talk a lot about that too, and the neurons and how elasticity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so one of the things that we recognized in moving into firepower seminars and why we do the the board breaking, and we have another activity where you actually place an arrow in the soft part of your throat and you literally write the goal that you're walking toward. And you walk toward it one determined step and that arrow bends and breaks and it's so empowering. I see one on your I see one on your bookcase. I keep yeah. mine in the kitchen. Yeah. I keep mine in the kitchen in a vase. <laughs> so this is the arrow. This is one that I've kept that I wrote many, many years ago. But it keeps I keep it as a reminder that this is where it broke. This is the tip, as you can see right here, of the arrow. And you literally place it right here. And then yeah. you step, you take the other end and you literally step towards your goal. It's called stepping into your power and it will break. It's it's quite quite powerful. And um, 
you know, it's not because we want to, these activities aren't done just to do them. There's, there's a term called embodied cognition where it actually shows uh, psychologically that if you tie in an activity that gives you information on a cellular level, that gives your brain new information, so your neurons fire differently, that you can do something that appears impossible and you realize it is very possible it empowers you at levels that you can never imagine. It's just, I can't tell you how many transformation we have witnessed, Connie and myself. It's just, and, and the faces and the, I can't believe I did that. And, oh my God, you know, it, it's so powerful. And, and the boards that we use, because what we have them do with the board breaking, we have them identify something that they really want to go towards, a juicy goal, something to go to their next level. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's in any area of, of life, and there's an exercise online that you can do called wheel of life, wheel as in driving wheel of life. And it breaks it up and you can choose the categories, but anything. I think, from I, have, I, think I have that actually on my bulletin board. The okay. wheel of life. Yeah. It's a great yeah. activity because it breaks it down into different components and, you know, health, finance, spirituality, relationship, family. I always add fun and recreation in there because that's something that most professionals tend to eliminate or, you know, make a smaller portion. Or just forget how important it is. That is so important for self-care, for sure. So we have them identify, what do you really want to go towards? And for me, obviously, is lately anyways, as we just had our birthdays, (laughs) it's about health because without good health and optimal health, What's the point? You know, you can have all the money in the world, but unless you have the optimal health, most people spend their life building the business and building whatever it is that they're doing in life. And then they spend whatever they've made in life to take care of the health. And so I want to make sure that that we take care of ourselves optimally with what we have. And so the board, I have one here. This is one, and, and I this, I keep this. This is one that I broke some time ago. So on one side, you write the thing that you're going towards. So for me, it was you know, consistently, consistent, healthy habits. And the word there is consistent because we get started on different things and then we stop and then we go back to our old pattern. That's my, uh, that's my MO. (laughs) And then on the backside, we have them write, well, what's stopping you? What's the obstacle? What's the barrier? And for me at this time, when I did this board, it was a little higher. There you go. Cause it was distractions. Wow. Cause there's so many distractions in life. I mean, how many of us plan our life, our day, and all of a sudden, it's like, bleep, a phone call comes in, or we get a something. Oh, email. So number. Yeah. It's Absolutely. Um, I, I just recently got turned on to the work of Nell Hallowell, ah. Ned Hallowell, okay. and he wrote the book, Driven, Driven to Distraction. Okay. And I am I was diagnosed with ADHD, and okay. I now am diving in to try to understand it more. And it truly is like, oh, look at the squirrel. You know? <laughs> So I work with a number of tools, including timers and things like that. Excellent. And the intention, I'm going to spend the next, I feel like a four-year-old. I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes working on the outline for this next show. <laughs> and then you set the timer and I write down the intention. And it actually works. It actually Absolutely. does work. Yeah. But the the advertising, the I don't even know what to call it. The advertising world out there, they want us distracted. Of course. Really and, and now with social media, it's just oh going to crazy. Wow. So, yeah, wow. it's like, and, and one more thing about these boards, I just want to see, I don't know if you can see the thickness of this, but it's not a tiny little thin thing that when I no. use to bring the boards out, individuals are like, what? I thought it was going to be like the boards that, you know, we use in karate. So I was like, mm, no, not no. necessarily. So, you know, yeah, you know what I just remembered, Karen and I worked together on a job out in the Midwest quite a few years ago. Yeah. Um, I, I, I somehow talked to my client. I had been with the client for about two years doing communications training, things like that. Culture where we, we, had, we were working in a changing culture. We did work with their values. And then finally, we got a new CEO. They got an interim CEO. And I watched her change as a result of this new CEO. And it was a regulated business. So everything was like this before. But I watched how I listened to her voice. I, I learned how things were. And one day I said, oh, I have an idea. Can we change our workshop? And she said, what did you have in mind? I said, well, I work with a partner that comes in and we break boards. And she got so curious. And I don't know how. 
but I suggested it. It took a few days. And she said, yeah, let's do that board breaking stuff. And we did not let anybody know. Now, of course, after the first, how many seminars did we do there? Like a whole oh bunch. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, quite a few. Well, I don't I don't remember, yeah. A whole bunch. So, of course, after the first one, the cat was out of the bag. So here we are on day two of a positive leadership workshop. And there is off to the corner somewhere a pile of stuff, no one noticed, it covered with a black curtain. <laughs> And then we get to the, the place where it's time for us to introduce, I think you introduced it, I don't remember, uh, what the next activity was. And you had to look, the people, <laughs> we have to break boards. And it was, in the end, they had so much fun. And remember that one guy, he quit smoking. He never, ever, ever went back to smoking. He broke one board and he completely quit smoking. It was amazing. And that's how impactful this is. If you yeah. truly, yeah. genuinely connect with the thing that you really want and realize that you can do something that appears impossible. And imagine that. I mean, here we are in a professional setting and most people are writing down, well, I want to generate this and I want to increase this. And But to him, it was quit smoking so he could be the dad he could be for his family, his kids, and be able to be healthy to grow and see them get older and walk his daughter down the aisle. I mean, that to me is so powerful. He, he had a beautiful, he created a whole vision around that, which was great. Yeah. And, you know, doing that in front of your colleagues also gives you a, a support system and an accountability because you, everybody watched you do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's funny because, you know, in Connie's book, uh, which is right here, Inspired Courage, Breaking Through Your Barriers to Success. I love that as book. you mentioned earlier, um, Connie is an introvert and she grew up- well, I haven't convinced her to come on the program yet, but she'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> she grew up extremely fearful as a child. And in her book, she'll even share that, how sometimes when she was a little girl with her mom, you know, a stranger would look at her and she would start crying. So, and, um, you know, it's interesting because I, as we started the company in 2006 and we kept moving forward, she really- went out from her comfort zone into the stretch zone, into the growth zone. And now she's an amazing facilitator. Um, and I'm happy to share the speaker reel for those of you who want to see what does a firewalk look like? What does arrow breaking look like? What does board breaking look like? Because I'm happy to share that with you all. But most importantly, the whole thing behind her book is fear. Where does it come from and how do we master it? Because it's not about eliminating fear. It's about mastering and understanding it. When, when well, she yeah, realized it's an emotion to have. Yeah, absolutely. You want to limit it. You want to learn how to work with it. Absolutely. And there are certain times where, I mean, if you're walking in the mountains and all of a sudden this lion comes out, <laughs> you want that fight or it's flight to kick in. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So it's not about eliminating it. It's about mastering and recognizing that. And for her, it was so important to realize, and it's in her book, which I highly encourage everyone to grab a, a copy because it's really good. It takes you through her whole story and her story of when she worked at the agency and when she went on the firewalk, she thought we were crazy sending her to this thing. And she thought people were going to be juggling on the stage and doing fire. And it just, it's a quite, quite funny book. She's really quite funny. Uh, but the most important thing is that she realized that she can ask herself this question, is this fear real? Is this real? Or is this something that somebody gifted to me? For example, her father has a fear of heights. And guess what? She grew up with a fear of heights. Oh, and I remember the story about skiing. Yeah, skiing. When yeah. she got up there and all, that's all she could feel was that the fear of, because she was way up high, wasn't she? Yeah. What happened is she went out, and it's in her book. It's a great story. She went out with some dear friends. One of her friend's sister was an Olympian uh, ski. Uh, uh, she was Olymp in the Olympic skiing, and she convinced him to go into what's called the um, the the bowl. I don't, I'm not a skier, so I may be not yeah. sharing the story correctly. But read the book; oh, it's right. in there. But basically, you have to go up on this uh, tiny little. You know, they take you up, and she explains it when she talks about it on stage. And this little tee where you hang on to, and then you get up there, and you literally, as if the end of the earth, it just drops because it's literally a bowl. And um, the person who was in the Olympic skier, she's like encouraging her and her friend. And they're like, yeah, yeah. So she says she got tired of waiting. So she left. So then the next friend is like, OK, I'm going to grab the courage and do it. And Connie was like, you know how we all make this deal with God? 
<laughs> she's like, I promise you I will never do X, Y, Z or whatever. And this is the time before she actually had the cell phone. I don't think it would even work up there. And keep in mind that she grew up in Florida. So to her, she should have looked at the map ahead of time. Because if you look at the map, there's no trees in that zone. And that would be clue number one, right? <laughs> <laughs> no trees. So she really thought, this is it. I'm going to die. I'm going to die up here. Who's going to wow. take care of my cats? Who's going to, you know, she's going through all this and she finally musters enough because she didn't want to die up there. And she actually went to the ski patrol and said, how do I get down other than this way? Said, there is no other way down. You have to go down this way. So she had no choice. Well, she did that, you know, she kind of had frostbite and who knows whatever else. Yeah. Well, yeah. So she and then she tells us in their book, and she also when she gives these presentations, it's amazing because she shares her personal story. She gathers enough and she does her, her play with God and her, you know, her agreement with God, and off she goes and she puts her hands up in the air and boom, she realizes I'm alive, I'm alive, and she's got the snow up to her her midway midsection, <laughs> and she realizes, oh my gosh, I'm moving. If I don't start doing what I need to do to ski to start, you know, turning the course. And it's just a hysterical story. But you know what's interesting, what she shares? If she could have had a way out, she would have taken it. The yeah. fact is that that was one of the best days of her entire life to this date. Because guess what she did once she got down there? She went back up there with the two individuals, with these two women, wow. and did it over and over and over again the entire day. Because she released that fear, I realized. Didn't remember, I didn't remember that part of the story, yeah. that she went back and did it again. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It just reminds us, we all know, and we've all heard that fear stands for false evidence appearing real. And well, in this case, physics, but, and, you know, yeah, well, I, I say the other ones <laughs> in this case. Yeah. Well, in this case, and I've heard this in, in the presentations that we give, forget everything and run, right? No, it's not forget everything and run. It's like, uh, I've heard face everything and rise. So there's many different ways of, of, of indicating what fear stands for, but truly it is false evidence appearing real because it's what we perceive and our thoughts drive everything. And this is one of the things that you teach. And that's why we love working with you, Joanna. And one of the things that we have learned from you is how important happiness is. Because mm. We didn't really incorporate that until we started working together and realizing, wow, there is a significant time connection from the brain to the entire body, and right. heart math teaches this us too, right. that right. in order to be peaceful, to have joy, and to feel good about ourselves, which happiness is a fundamental thing that we all want in life. We all want to feel good. And so that's one of the reasons why for us, we make sure that we anchor that feeling of happiness and joy as soon as somebody breaks through that thing, that activity that appears impossible, even if it's just a tiny little activity, which has nothing to do with one of these breakthrough activities. We have a thing called handshake mingle where people, especially extroverts, have to shake hands in different ways. And they start having fun with different people. It's like the joy comes out and they realize, okay, I'm an introvert, but I can still do things that, you know, are a little out of my yeah, comfort. Yeah. We had so much fun. We did, when did we do, the last one we did was in November. We're long overdue. But the last one we did was November. And it was really amazing to see how much fun people had. And mm -hmm. the high-fiving and the laughter and the noise. I often wonder, uh, you, you know, the, the, the hotels, the, this, was a, this was actually a small, <laughs> uh, this was a small, mo more of a motel than hotel kind of thing. But you've got to wonder what's going on in that room because we're making a lot of noise and lots of people are laughing. But they were so energized when they left. That's, yeah, that's the thing. They go out of there with a lot of energy. And it's, it's easier to anchor the behaviors we taught during the team activities, during the, the activities they did, you know, one-to-one. Uh, -one. Yep. It's easier to anchor that if you've got that laughter and that fun going on at the same time. And that's really one of the reasons why we do so much team building and we yeah. bring in these activities with the team building. Because what the team building does is we create activities that are very safe and everything that does like the board breaking your firewood, those are all challenged by choice. We never, ever force anybody to do this. The team building ones that we do are pretty easy to do. But the reason we do them is for people to recognize and become aware of their patterns, even yeah. their language patterns. If we have a communication activity that we do, uh, where individuals have to work together as a team to, to do a certain type of activity, which doesn't require anything heavy or anything like that. 
But all of a sudden, the patterns start kicking in. If somebody's a bully, they're like, you're not doing it right. If somebody's very quiet and they just follow the leader, they'll just, you know, get back and not say a word. If somebody keeps interrupting, it's like, yes, but, yes, but, which we all know in language means no. So for those of you who do recognize the yes, but, not in yourself, but in others, change that to yes, and it will change how you communicate and how I, it I, and you may remember this. I teach that but stands for behold the underlying truth. I love you, but <laughs> I hear you, but right, exactly. And you know, so impact some of these little tiny things that we do uh, in our teachings. That yeah. there's just so much impact because when somebody learns that, if it really goes in, they become yeah. so aware. I have found but is one of the hardest words to get out of my language. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it is appropriate. You know, like the world we live in is such a negative world, but yeah, it's but. perfect there. But we have the power to shift that and to make sure that our world, that our environment is one of positivity and one that we do things and surround ourselves with like-minded people and turning off the news and just watching <laughs> things that we really feel is something right. that is comfortable to us and something that resonates with us. There are some people that watch the news all the time, but it resonates with them and it doesn't affect them. For me, I tend to, you know, take, I, I feel things very easily. So I have to be very cautious of that. So it's just, again, awareness is the beginning of everything is becoming aware of your own thoughts, your own patterns, behavioral, your own language patterns. One that's one of my favorite to teach, and I know you teach this also, we often have done it together, is the phrase, no problem, right? Which uh, that the only place in the world where that works is Jamaica, because it's part of their culture. But other than Jamaica, no and problem are two negatives, and it will cut the energy like you and wouldn't How believe. many people then say to us, can I say no worries? No. <laughs> no and worries. I had a client who had uh -huh. been in her own business for many, many years. She owned an agency, many, many years. And um, she retired. And one of her clients pleaded with her to come back and mm -hmm. work for him exclusively, of course, as he said, on a part-time basis. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what that looks like, right? So <laughs> she is the act, she's the one who hired me to come do this work. Uh -huh. They, were, they wanted something on customer experience, on customer service. And I still do some of that work, not just the positive leadership, yeah. because they go hand in hand. And that's one of the first things I taught them. And she sat there. She didn't know what to do with herself because yeah. she was like, oh, my God, I've said that my whole life. And by the time we finished the series, and probably even by the third session, it was a six-session series, uh -huh. she was so proud of herself. So we would do our circle at the end, our appreciation circle. Yeah. She's, I didn't say no problem once this week <laughs> because she had no idea. People don't have any idea they don't. how that impacts the body. And of course, there's a beautiful scientific uh, explanation for that, why that works, but um, or why it works the way it works. And when people actually get it, they yeah. change. And I have been known, I have been known, uh, while on a customer's, while being the customer and being on a customer service call after somebody did a good or a bad job uh, taking care of me and they say, no problem. I go, do you have any idea what that actually means? No, <laughs> I don't think a lot because that would be obnoxious. But I, I do want people to understand. In fact, last week I was in the, the little UPS store by me. I'm there a lot. Yeah. And um, there, there's a young guy, a new guy working there. The guy has never smiled at me once. Wow. And we were in there alone. I think it was it was a Saturday. And I he picked up whatever my package was, gave it to me and what have you. And he handed it to me. And I gave him this giant grin. You know, thanks, thanks. You know, and all of a sudden I saw the corners of his mouth lift up. Yeah. Yeah. I said, Oh, looks like you're about to smile. <laughs> and he kind of tried to shove it right back in. Yeah. <laughs> really funny. And I said, do you have any idea what smiling does to your body? He goes, mm -hmm. no. Well, he leans in. And of course, I said, the moment you lift those lips, it starts a series of chemicals happening in your brain. And before you know it, I'm giving him a little lesson. He was amazing. He was yeah. like, what? How do I learn more? I sent him over to learn positive psychology somewhere. I said, yeah. you need to know this. This is your body. Yeah. And it was so it was sweet because it was, it was a real innocent 
Absolutely. you know, and to think that you can get all through school, yeah. really, without knowing how this system works. They're teaching yeah. you how the computer system works, yeah. how the, the office systems work, but we don't, we don't Absolutely. teach people how this system yeah. works. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and also how important, because this is one of the reasons why we also have amazing courses with communication where we customize things. And body language is so important. Words, according to Verhavian, is 7%. Uh, tonality is 38%. And physiology, which is a body language. Well, that, but that's being challenged now. Because the last time it I is. went to that, every fiber in my body said, I know it's not true. So I did. But you know what? No one can actually figure it out. So people use right. that. The point being that physiology is so much more impactful. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, have you ever been in a meeting? Right. Or in a meeting with eye rollers, like, oh, Joanna, really? You know? <laughs> eye motors? Is that what you call them? Eye motors? That eye motor? Eye so, motor. you know, it. and at least cues, there's another great book that I often refer to. It's called Five Dysfunctions of a Team. It's a fantastic yes. book where it actually brings in five different individuals of a team and they all have their own patterns and behaviorals. The marketing person is an eye roller. The IT person always comes in with the computer and sits down at all meetings and never pays attention and just is right. Wow. So wow. when people do that, you don't know, are they, are they listening? Are they taking notes or, you know, uh, so it's a great book to also tap into and realize that we all have our patterns. And that's one of the things that I love doing in our trainings uh, through firepower seminars and also working with you with a positive leader is people become aware of their patterns and how we tend to sort negatively, not because we're negative, but because we live in a negative world. Oftentimes I'll tell people, okay, pull out a piece of paper. Now on one side of the paper, list all your positive characteristics about you and they get stuck. They're like, okay, um, thoughtful, hmm. um, smart. And, and so they get stuck and, and they'll say, okay, now turn the paper over and all the negative characteristics about you. Oh, and so they start writing this list. It comes naturally. And so part of it is training ourselves to recognize we all have positive attributes. And for those of you listening to this, I challenge you to go to those people that know you well, colleagues, friends, coworkers, uh -huh. you name it, and ask them to send you a list, whether it's an email or something in writing, it doesn't matter, of what your positive characteristics are. You will be floored by what they tell you. I have done this activity several times with those in my life. And I'm constantly reminded that I have so many more positive characteristics than I originally thought I had. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's actually one of the first exercises you do at happiness school. Okay. You go out. And it's phrased a little bit differently. When you see me at my best, uh -huh. what is it you see? So you're asking people to give you your strengths. But recently I started taking a little mini course on, you know, how to use AI to get new clients or something. And that's one of the first activities. And I haven't done it yet to go around to your friends with the same thing, your business colleagues and things like that. What yeah. is it about me that's positive? What is it about me that you like? What is it about me that yeah. you see? People are em embarrassed to do it, which is really interesting. People yeah. say they're embarrassed to do it. But whenever I've had coaching clients or any other kind of client go actually go and do it, uh -huh. It feels so good. I have never thrown out one of those pieces of paper. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like, and, um, it's like, do you remember Susan Ford Collins? Oh, sure. Of course. Yeah. I learned something like that from her. She talks about success files uh -huh. and I keep little files like that. Then, and like we say, like when testimonials come in, especially if you work alone, I mean, you know, you can, I, let me speak for myself. I can talk myself down in a hole really quickly because if I hit a downward spiral, uh, it's it's so well greased now that I go fast. You know, I don't. It's like going down a, a slick slide. And so that's I, why we teach what we teach. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, I think you you've heard it before. We teach what we most need to of learn. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. and I think go, going back to uh, referencing the Connie's book. In her book, and this is to me one of the most powerful things, I actually have a little marker in here, and it's a bookmarker that you gave me several years ago. I don't know if you recognize it or not. I put one on my desk. If this you is stop, what it says. If you stop Joanna. getting better, you cease being good. If you stop. Now, that's being, and so I have this turned over to um, her page 173, where it actually talks about empowering beliefs, examples, and disempowering beliefs. For example, 
How we many saw. of us have heard, I'm not good enough at whatever, as Never. opposed to I am good enough and what I do is good enough, you know? I'm smart. I'm not smart. I remember having my first business, what a concept, and um, being in this course, the NLP course that we mentioned, and I'm going through a process called logical levels where you go into your environment, your capabilities, your beliefs, and so on. And I went into that with a limiting belief that I wasn't smart enough because all my life I grew up being told that my sister was a smart one, not me. So it oh. got kind of programmed into me. Oh my! Goodness. And so I'm going through this activity and... The instructor is like, so um, you have this company now and uh, how many millions in sales do you have and how many employees and what is it? And so she said, and do you think a smart person can do that or a not smart person? And it just clicked. I was like, oh my gosh, she's right. I am smart. And the fact that I love accounting and balance every month, it's just, it's like, but it, it just goes to reinforce that we are the products of our environment, our upbringing, the beliefs that are gifted to us. And so we need to challenge those. We need to take a really good look, being the visual. We need to feel. We need to hear the things that we tell ourselves, all the modalities, all yeah. the different sensory-based information. What could you do differently? And ask yourself empowering questions versus disempowering. The only thing you want to ask with a why question is tied into your purpose. Why do I want to do what I do? For me, it's about empowering people and, and getting people to do the things they really want to do and having them experience joy in their life and having something in fulfillment. So, and, but it, and then the question is, well, who can I tap into that can assist me to build a business? Who can I ask? Who knows information? What can I do differently than what I'm doing now? Asking those empowering questions, which is all in the book. So I highly recommend that. And I know I can talk forever, Joanna. So I know this is going on a bit long. So you'll have to cut me off because, you know, I think we all have the power to do more than what we're capable of doing because we are limiting ourselves. And so my challenge to everybody listening to this is sit back and write down all your accomplishments. Really think about it. Really take inventory yeah, yeah. and start what you referenced to earlier. Start a success journal. Okay, I started my business doing that with only, you know, putting, I started my company putting it on credit cards because I had no money. Me you know, and so <laughs> and writing all the success journal and, and, and or a victory log, whatever you want to keep it whatever you want to name it. So, but really referencing to that because that's what keeps you going and surrounding yourself with those people that are going to continue empowering you, supporting you, encouraging you and keep reading, keep listening to audiobooks, keep attending courses like The Positive Leader and Breaking Barriers, Board Breaking with Firepower Seminars and Step Into Your Power and Team Building and Communication. That's what it's all about. And so I look forward to empowering that's, others. That's the growing edge. And you saw me looking up because there's a faded index card on my bulletin board that says my success strategy. Uh -huh. And I had a coach years and years ago who was coaching me. He said, I want you to talk about your successes. Mm -hmm. And eventually I have, I don't know, eight or nine things on that list because these are things. One is be curious. Another one is be playful, stay centered. But that we, that's, we create our own success strategies. But then some of us, and I'll speak for myself because I, you lean towards the, you, you know, when I teach happiness, you know, some people are born happy and some people aren't. You were yeah, born happy. Absolutely. I was not. So my my wiring is different. And now that I'm now that I'm discovering the ADHD stuff, very yeah. different to understand. They call us the dopamine deprived. Mm. I'm like, oh geez, okay. how do you like that? But so I, I have to I have to think a little bit more, I think, than some yeah. people to, to keep finding the happy place, which is why I teach it. Yeah. Which is why I teach it, because I feel like if I can do it, anybody can do it. But little things like this, a card that says, these are my success strategies. The yeah. file that says, these are the successes I've had. Yeah. Uh, I have a little book down on the floor there that I, at the end of the week, mm -hmm. and inspired by Susan Ford Collins, I hope we, we should send a copy of this to her. <laughs> she said that when she wrote, what, what was the name of her book? Oh my God, The Art of Success? I, I, I the don't recall exactly that. Yes. Like that. Yeah. She interviewed dozens and dozens and dozens of, of successful people to ask them what they do. Yeah. And she extrapolated from that three different things. 
they focus on their, um, let's see if I can remember this. They focus on what they created, what they deleted, and there's one more. Oh my goodness, deletion creation. Well, we'll have to talk to Susan. I'll have to do that as an after note. But Maybe bring I, her on as a guest. <laughs> well, that would be fun. I haven't seen her in a long time. Uh, and it'll come to me. I'll put it in a footnote or something if I get a chance to do a footnote. Um, she, I know what you're doing. You're looking. I, you, I, I was looking to up. see if I, if I could find her book. But I, <laughs> but I added to that because when I did it at the end of the week, I added to that something called, I call soul food. Yeah. Because for me, part of my success yeah. Yeah. It's anchoring to something that's larger than myself. Yeah. You know, we can, some people call it spirit. Some people, everybody's got a different name for, for it. But I don't really know anybody that doesn't have the need for that in their life. The thing that's outside of themselves, that yeah. that that is your purpose. Yeah. That is your purpose. That informs your purpose. Yeah. So I think that's, um, I, maybe that's a good way to, to start closing uh, is that, we live, we keep, we keep creating new growing edges yep. because I think we're always, I think we're always seeking that. And mm -hmm. I think as we grow and change, and you certainly have had a lot of that in your life, as I have in mine, we're always seeking that next growing edge because it's bring a, bringing us closer and closer to who we are truly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I would like to share a quote that Zig Ziglar shared with me and it stuck oh, sure, with me sure. for, for my lifetime. And I have this card, see you at, on the top kid, you know, it's just an amazing human being. And what he taught me, and I share on an ongoing basis, is you are who you are and where you are by what's gone into your mind. And you can change who you are and where you're going by what goes into your mind. And that is so true. And that's what you and I do, Joanna, is we enable people to recognize what has gone into their mind and how they can shift that to change what's going into their mind to empower themselves through positivity, through activities, through breaking barriers and having breakthroughs in their lives and realizing, I mean, I have a little quote, I don't know if you can see it or not, uh, it says there are no failures, only outcomes. And that brings in the word that you mentioned earlier, just get curious. Don't get upset with yourself. Yeah, yeah. My, my dear friend and shaman from Ireland, Amantha Murphy, always taught me that instead of judging, recognize, recognize the patterns yeah. instead of judging them. And you can change them if you choose to. So those are some final thoughts for you. He's an amazing person. And of course, uh, I am a little older than you are. So words fly out of my head, but they fly back in. Yeah. So the success story is completion, deletion, creation. And then on top of that, I added soul food. So yeah. if you want to track that at the end of your week, it's a lovely way to end your week. So, and it's a lovely way to end this. Karen, thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending My this. pleasure. I'm putting a little heart emoji in oh, here. I, I, I absolutely and since you, you I, I know you teach in Florida, but since you moved away from Florida and fly in here, I don't well, I go back and forth Florida and Atlanta all the time. Yeah. Well, the yeah. next time you're here, let's spend a little bit more time together. That would be Got lovely. It would be my all pleasure. Right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.